Cafe show and we're looking at some of the weirder stuff that we found on the internet this week including a horrible road crossing um, with some heavy traffic, a tumbleweed attack and an amazing basketball shot. Um, you might not recognise this person here. Hello, I'm Louise. I'm on work experience. I'm She's not, not really. really. She's made that bit up. But anyway, yeah, this is Louise. She's part of the Truth Loader team, but Phil's on holiday, so you're going to have to deal with us too today. Um, anyway, one of the first things that we want to show you is this. Honestly, I don't know what is going through this woman's head when she crosses the road. Um, if we can play the video, it's, um, it's, she's crossing the road in Melbourne in Australia. And you can see she's pushing a pram. She's crossing while it's on red. There's a kid in tow behind her. She just leaves all to himself. And then the cars go and he has to try and dodge them and that is one of the worst road crossings that i've ever seen i can't even watch i actually felt sick watching that i made i was thinking that poor driver that's what <laughs> i felt on my driving test <laughs> yeah i mean what would you do I mean, the, the cars they clearly don't see him to start off with and then they and then they just keep on going they're stopping and starting stopping and starting and the kids just like basically going where do i go where do i go he's got no idea what i love though is i like to think if i was in that position i wouldn't be filming it obviously we're very pleased it's on camera he's got a dash cam oh, he's cool. <laughs> it's all right dash cams he, are cool dash cams make this show <laughs> if everybody oh, had don't. a dash cam we you know it's um i think everyone should get them because they're brilliant every single week we feature something from a dash cam it's usually a crash but um this time it's it's fortunately the kid did get to the other side he's absolutely fine I think they're a great idea simply because I know the way I drive, especially in the big smoke of London. It means that every time I make a mistake, I can prove it wasn't my fault. <laughs> every time you make a mistake, yeah. you can prove it wasn't your fault. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Anyway, speaking of cameras and cars, the next video we want to show you is, it's just weird. I think probably just take a look at it and then we'll talk about it afterwards. So somebody said to me earlier that they think that that looks like a Hitchcock film, right? But I think it looks like a load of Furbies rolling across the road. Well, you're so. both cleverer than me because I just was watching it just thinking someone's told a really bad joke. <laughs> hey. Get it? Tumbleweed? Yeah. Was it, like was it you? Were you in the studio car? Floor <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and across the whole of YouTube. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, I mean, it was on a lease road in Texas, apparently. It was filmed by a guy called Chris Reed while he was uh, driving across it. Um, I just, I don't know, it's one of those weird things. What, what would you do in that situation? you just got to keep on ploughing through them, I suppose. It, does, it reminds me of um, uh, the last Mission Impossible film, you know, when they got stuck in the smoke, in the sandstorm. Granted, not quite as dramatic as a Tom Cruise action film, but dramatic nonetheless. I can't say I've ever seen it. Sorry. <laughs> I've never seen any of the Mission Impossibles. <laughs> Tom Cruise puts me off. Anyway, that's just my personal opinion. Um, anyway, next up, um, we've got this amazing, amazing basketball shot, and we'll just let it run. Let's go. So that was in a high school basketball game. It was the very, very last moment of it, and he won it for them. It was uploaded by a teacher who we think was from his school. He's called Stephen Sickles. But how much would you love to be that kid uh, after the game? I'll tell you how much I like. Bearing in mind, I'm standing on a box to be in any way the same height as you on the camera. Tall. I would love... Shut up! <laughs> not, that's all. Um, I would love to have that kind of, well, sporting prowess, agility, height, and, you know, kudos around school. It was just the way he fell over. Oh, by the way, the kid's name is uh, Daniel Bay Barley. Um, apparently his nickname is Bay, um, but his real name's Daniel Barley. But anyway, it's just the way he fell over, sort of rolled over and then went, do you know what, I'm just going to go for it. And when it went in, he must have just been like, the, yes. The thing is, when, when a kid has got a name already at that age that could be a superstar basketball player name, you know he's going places. As soon as you've got a middle name, in quotation marks, set for life. I don't it have is. one. 
Anyway, we're going to move away from like the weirder stuff that we found on the internet um, and just have a slightly more serious uh, discussion for a little while. Not discussion, but anyway. Um, yesterday, um, the British Parliament passed, uh, well, voted for gay marriage and Louise is going to tell you all about it. Yeah, so basically after years and years of campaigning by people all over the country, uh, the, gov well, the, uh, the government in the House of Commons yesterday went to vote in an epic eight-hour debate in the Houses of, uh, in House of Commons. Uh, MPs were gathered, they discussed the debate from about 11 o'clock in the morning to just after 7 o'clock at night. They finally voted. They voted 400 MPs in favour of passing uh, the gay marriage bill. That's in England and Wales. And 175 against. Now, it's something that everyone was talking about yesterday, ourselves included. So we had to get someone uh, to touch chat to us today because it's such a massive news story. So we, earlier we caught up with Patrick Studwick. The reason this, mar this vote for same-sex marriage is so important is that it's the final piece of the jigsaw for full legal equality for gay people. It has very deep resonance symbolic importance for the state to recognize the love between two people of the same sex as being just as valid, just as worthy of respect, and just the same as the love and, and commitment of two people of the opposite sex, sends a very strong, clear message throughout society. I knew I was gay when I was 12. And at that time, which is 23 years ago, we didn't have even civil partnerships. We had an unequal age of consent. We still had Section 28. Um, I was fully aware that my life would be blighted by bullying and discrimination. And so that future to me, my adult life, looked pretty awful. It's a very depressing prospect. Kids growing up who, who think that they're or know that they're bisexual or gay um, can say, well, I can have what my friends have. I can get married. I can get children. I, I can have children. And uh, I will be able to withstand any discrimination or bullying or abuse that may come my way. Equal marriage, same-sex marriage, will have zero effect on straight couples. Um, it will have zero effect on the institution of marriage other than bolstering it by widening it and making it more welcome um, and focusing on love and equality. Yeah, so that was uh, journalist and broadcaster Patrick Studwick, who, uh, I can't even say his name, uh, who was one of the, the most um, passionate voices in the debate uh, about equal marriage in the UK, in England and Wales. And uh, it's so interesting, isn't it, because you can be very passionate about a subject that doesn't affect you directly, but then when you hear people like Patrick talk, you realise just how much and how deeply things like this um, have affected the gay community, and it's so exciting. Yeah, it's, ki it's kind of under it it's difficult to understand how it was such a big deal. Um, I mean, it's still got to go through the Lords and things like that, right? It's not completely passed, but like, it, I, d I personally, I, I just don't see why it is that it's been so long, but you know. Mm civil partnerships and then what, what difference does it make to me I know I understand the church as a as a different point of view and other people might have a different point of view but to me it just seems like a no brainer you know, fair enough I yeah. found it really interesting actually yesterday listening to the debates of the people who are anti the equal marriage bill um, mainly because I don't personally feel that way so to hear those arguments in the Commons was very interesting especially when people said um, that it, it, it undermined the sanctity of marriage. I find that difficult to believe when you see all these celebrities who go through husbands fast than I've had hot dinners. <laughs> Frankly, I think they're more of an issue. You can't <laughs> have many hot dinners. You just eat cold buffet <laughs> food every night. <laughs> I'm from the north. I love hot dinners. <laughs> <laughs> Bit like a shot hot pot every. <laughs> exactly. I like stereotypes. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but I think my favourite, my favourite part of the debate yesterday was when someone summed up. One of the MPs summed up that um, just if Elton John and David Furnish got engaged, it wouldn't matter to the rest of the relationships in Britain. You know, your marriage isn't going to crumble because two people who were gay and in love get married. I think that's something that's, really. that's probably true. That's pretty much what Patrick said as well. He said it won't affect anyone, so, you know, fair enough. Um, anyway, we're just going to go to some, some comments. Um, we've got a couple of uh, great ones here about the basketball player, Daniel Bay Barley. Um, 
<clears throat> it's uh, Sasha Sa or Sacha Sa. Sorry, I'm having a film moment. Um, <laughs> anyway, <Wow. laughs> he uh, he or she uh, said, uh, "Wow, just wow to the basketball thing." I think that pretty much sums it True. up. True. Um, and then we have uh, Stu08087, who just said, legend. I assume you're talking about the basketball thing and not Louise. <laughs> Obviously Maybe you are. Um, but anyway, um, and then we've also got one from Spongy Frog, which is a bit cryptic. Um, I would love to say my name on the internet, but I'm the only person in the world with my name. It's true. Well, maybe it's one of those crazy experiments where you have to put his name into search engines and find out what happens. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll do that afterwards. Or maybe you can explain. We, yeah. we, might, we might come back to that one. Um, anyway, we've got one more video that we wanted to show you today, which is um, it's just brilliant. Like, it's one of those it's one of those kids will do the funniest things moments. Um, and there's a young girl um, waiting at a train station for a train to arrive, and she gets a little bit excited. So this is what happened. What's coming? A train. Are we going to ride the train? Yeah. <gasps> Look at how it goes to us. <laughs> oh yep. my goodness. Here it comes. Here it comes. Hey, we gotta be safe. Stand mm -hmm. back. Whoa. Do you know what? I have to I have a confession to make. I went to Japan a couple of years ago. I saw a Shinkansen, and that was pretty much my Are they reaction. The bullet trains? They're the bullet trains. They're amazing. I totally get with Madeline on this. It, um, I, I just can't <laughs> I, really. Yeah. I just can't imagine getting that excited. I mean, I I appreciate the fact that she's a kid, right? I I, I find it difficult to get that excited by anything, let alone a train. Yeah, but she's full of the joys of youth. She's seeing things I for know. the first time. She's not cynical like you. And I'm jealous. I'm jealous. That's what I'm saying. I really, really wish I could get that excited about just anything. Maybe that could be something that we do on next Wednesday's Hangout. We just sit you in a room, <laughs> we bring <laughs> things in, and we see what yeah. makes you smile. Um, cool. Yeah, I'm up for that. Do you want to watch that, YouTube? Probably not. Anyway, right, that's it for today. But we do have a lot of cool stuff coming up later on this week. Um, tomorrow... We're going back to gaming. Um, this time we're taking on whether or not gaming is addictive. We've got some pretty cool guests for that. And we'll let you know more about that later on. And then on Friday, we've got Sam doing Investigates. And uh, he's got some strange interviews. I'd say unique is a nice way of saying unique. that, maybe. Unique, unique is probably special. A... Things you only find on Truthloader. Um, including zombies. And whether or not they could possibly exist. Anyway, so uh, tune in on Friday and you'll see that. It's at 4 p.m. that one. And tune in on Thursday for the debate, which is at 7 p.m. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then. See you later.